1971, the Space Shuttle Discovery captured on videotape several anomalous objects moving in unusual trajectories. Four NASA scientists were asked to look at the footage, concluding, the objects seen are orbiter-generated debris illuminated by the sun. The flicker of light is the result of firing of the attitude thrusters on the orbiter, and the abrupt motions of the particles result from the impact of gas jets from the thrusters. To illustrate the sequence of events, the flash is the thruster firing. The abrupt change in direction of the particles are a result of the gas jet which accelerates the debris. Dr. Jack Kasher, a physicist at the University of Nebraska, has recently completed an exhaustive analysis of the event. What I'm going to tell you is the result of my analysis as a physicist and a scientist, uh, just taking the data and seeing where it goes. And the bottom line of my investigation is uh, I started out my investigation assuming that there were ice particles mm -hmm. and trying along the way to prove that there were ice particles. And uh, I found out that at least if you take the data that I've got and the analysis that I've, I've gotten, that I've done of it, it's, that, that's a completely untenable position. The, the camera was focused at infinity, mm -hmm. and any little speck would just yeah. be invisible. And you can tell that's true because uh, toward the end of the segment, the camera pans down and looks at the side of the cargo bay, and you can see it's grossly out of focus, then it focuses and then turns toward the front. Uh -huh. So uh, it was focused at infinity, so any little particles near the camera don't work, ice particles don't work, and after that, there aren't many options. And meteors, absolutely not. They don't change yeah. direction, and space junk, satellites don't change direction. There are no other, no other options. These are objects that are clearly at times above the uh, air glow, and so they're maneuvering and they are in outer space. Therefore, they're spacecraft. I don't see any other interpretation that mm -hmm. you can have. That yeah. They are some kind of spacecraft. At the time this event was recorded, the shuttle was northwest of Australia, moving southeast into the sun. Here is the camera view from the shuttle just prior to the event. What appears to be the horizon is actually the top of the Earth's air glow. The Earth's physical horizon is located about 60 miles below the top of the air glow. Here you see the changes of direction of several of the objects after the flash. The main object will appear moving to the left followed shortly by a flash, at which time the objects abruptly change direction, followed by two streaks. This is a close-up of the same sequence, screen right, showing several objects at the time of the flash. Note the regular pulsations of the objects, which is inconsistent with tumbling ice particles. Shortly after, the camera pans down to the shuttle bay. The jerkiness is a result of the camera movement. Note this object, when silhouetted, appears to have the shape of a domed disc. Later in the mission, this object shot through the upper corner of the frame. Enlarged and slowed down, it also appears to be disc-shaped 
with a regular pulsation. First, a simple observation. If the particles are accelerated by a blast from the attitude adjustment thrusters, then it would follow that the camera, which is attached to the shuttle, would register the change in attitude of the shuttle. Dr. Kasher has calculated that change would be about six degrees. However, no change in the camera frame occurs throughout the entire sequence. Another simple observation is if the abrupt motions of the particles result from the impact of gas jets from the thrusters, then the trajectories of the objects should trace back to the source of the acceleration on the shuttle. As shown in this illustration, that is not the case. This is a graph of the main object's movement over time. The short downward section here indicates that the object is moving to the left in the frame. The upward section indicates that the object has changed direction and is moving to the right in the frame. This area, which corresponds to the flash, indicates that the object has stopped dead in its tracks for a full half second. Now, you tell me how this could work. If it's an ice particle, it's somewhere up about here. And I can prove, using what the methods that I just pointed out, that before the flash, before the pre-flash, it's moving like this, in this direction. And the reason it stops, then, has to be that something is pushing back in this direction. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that can't be the shuttle. So the pre-flash explanation doesn't work. The reason that object, whatever it is, stops is not one of the attitude adjuster rockets. So we have a tremendous problem because it stops right at or just before the main flash. And it simply can't do that if it's an ice particle. Finally, Dr. Kasher has calculated the velocity of the main object and compared this to the known velocity of the thruster aboard the shuttle. For example, if the object is an ice particle, we can easily determine it to be 65 feet from the shuttle. At the flash, the object stops for a full half second before accelerating in a different direction. If the flash is a thruster firing, then the gas jet takes a half second to reach the object and begin to accelerate it. We therefore multiply distance with time to arrive at the exhaust velocity of the thruster which should compare to the known velocity supplied by NASA of 8,400 feet per second. Yet these two figures are not even close to each other. To illustrate this another way, in order for this sequence to work, the object would have to be 22 miles from the shuttle. Knowing the direction that the object is accelerated, the thruster would have to be 15 miles from the shuttle, which clearly cannot be the case. So uh, what does this all come down to? Uh, I, I've really tried to do a, a genuine, honest, scientific inquiry into this. The reason I, I did it, of course, is because I didn't think the object would end up being ice particles, and that implies that they are spacecraft, which would be a very important thing. But I tried to be fair in what I did, and I didn't push my conclusions. And at times, it got to the point where I thought I would have to drop the whole thing because I, had to, I got to points where I thought it was going to fall apart. It did not fall apart, and you've seen the analysis. There really is... is virtually nothing that supports the ice particle theory from the data that I've had have that have subjected to the analysis and there are on the other side of the coin at least five proofs that the objects were not ice particles therefore spacecraft and they were either extraterrestrial or terrestrial obviously that's the dichotomy that we have and uh, if they were terrestrial that implies a whole new level of technology that's levels and levels uh, beyond anything that we have on this earth. You saw some of those accelerations that we discussed. 
uh, tremendous accelerations that would flatten any human pilot far beyond the capability of any craft that we have. So whether they're terrestrial or extraterrestrial, uh, they're far beyond conventional uh, programs. If they're terrestrial, that implies that we've been working on them for decades. Also implies that the, the space, the Star Wars program is, I guess you might say, a sham because we already have craft that are far beyond what we expected with Star Wars. And so that's been all kind of a, a waste of money. If they're extraterrestrial, it's really big news. We're being visited by other planets. It's also scary because those streaks that went through there, uh, you can interpret those as well as I can. One possible explanation is that we were firing at them. That's a scary scenario. And so, once again, my analysis is a scientific one that at least satisfies me that those objects were not uh, ice particles. And beyond that, we're all in the same boat together because we're speculating and, and I have no evidence to prove what one was or the other, or whether one explanation works or the other, but it opens up the door, it opens up the can of worms to discussing some of these questions.